what's up? This is Kirsten Joy Weiss, and thank you so much for joining me today. We got a Chris Vector to look at, and uh, if you notice, it's kind of unusual. So many of you may have played with one of these on a video game, but how many of you guys have played with them on the range? They are great in Hollywood films, Hollywood flicks, and all sorts of stuff like that, but are they good range toys? Well, we're gonna see today. Now, one of the things about the Chris Vector, which is, well, the most important thing about a Chris Vector, is the recoil system and the recoil management system. And one of the things that is really easy to do with a Vector is press this little magazine release because it's right where the grip is, and then the magazine falls out. So, you saw that right on camera. Let's uh, put it back in. All right, I'm gonna try not to do that again. So, the most important thing about the Chris Vector is the recoil management system. And what happens in these is this, this paddle right here that makes it kind of look like a shark belly or something like that, I don't know, it's real funky looking. It's innovative in the sense of most guns throw that recoil back into your shoulder and they tend to rise. But with the vector system, the bolt actually throws the energy back through and there's this big square uh, weight system, basically. And it throws that down, so the energy is actually forced down and then back up instead of back into your shoulder. So Chris says that their recoil mitigation system uses the recoil energy to work to the shooter's advantage instead of against it. I have found this to be true. This was originally made for a submachine gun platform. It makes sense because machine guns, and any fully automatic gun, has a tendency to walk and rise on that target. I have not had a chance to shoot the submachine version. I don't have an issue shooting submachine guns. They're very fun as long as you lean into it correctly. But why not improve it? And I think that this has the potential to definitely improve it a lot and make it just way easier to shoot. So I'm very curious how this reacts in full auto but it was uh, modified for the civilian market because we're not allowed to have freedom. So <laughs> I had asked myself, is it a semi-auto that's just longing to be its bigger brother full auto? As a semi-auto, I think it stands on its own. Yes, there's a little bit more weight. Yes, it's big, but I have about a, I don't know, like a six to eight inch plate down there. And I was able to keep my sights on that without an issue the whole time. I mean, it really does mitigate the recoil. Now, if you're shooting slowly, I would say that almost any gun's gonna work for you, but if you're gonna shoot fast in action, this is a pretty fun little gun. After testing between my Angston AR-15 platform and this, which are both pistol carbine 9mm, this comes in 45 too, was actually originally made in 45. But between those two platforms, same caliber, um, I'm gonna say that this is, this is actually easier to shoot in some ways and harder to shoot in other ways. So let me show you. Let's do it gangsterine. <laughs> Apparently the gangsterine works real nice. Remember, subscribe or even bookmark this page because sometimes YouTube doesn't like to tell you guys that a video came out. Sometimes they don't even notify you when you put the bell on, but try the bell, let me know if you get notifications or not. And if you'd like to support my channel, make sure more videos like this happen, go to the description and check out the links. 
it was a pretty parallel comparison because my Angston Arms is very easy to keep on target as well. But this was a little bit easier. The only thing that held me back a bit is the trigger because it's a lot heavier than my Angston's trigger. That has a CMC trigger, so it's not really fair to compare the two because it is an aftermarket trigger. Uh, this is the Chris Vector trigger that comes with it. I don't think you can put an aftermarket trigger in there. So I would say that the trigger on this holds you back a little bit. It's kind of heavy. Uh, the reset's fine, it's pretty consistent, but it is just a little bit heavier, so it's a little bit harder for me to shoot faster. But it's just something also that I think I could just get used to. Another thing that I was really curious about was how would this be in prone? In my head, because of how big this is, you wouldn't be able to get as close to the ground as, say, an AR-15 carbine. So if both of them have standard magazines, which one could I get lower to the ground with? What I found out to my surprise was that both were very equal because the pistol grip actually gets in the way. While there might be some slight advantage to an AR platform versus the Vector, they're both pretty similar. As far as ergonomics, it's actually pretty well balanced. A lot of the weight is where you would expect it in that big old paddle in the front. It is pretty heavy. It's heavier than my AR-15 carbine pistol. Now my Angston, I have a Maxim brace on there, so that adds a little weight, which I wanted, and I balanced it specifically to have that weight. But this is out of the box pretty great as well. Now if you haven't noticed, one of the things that I really do not like about this gun is the fact that, check this out. So there's a few ways you can hold this in the front. You put your hand right here, but then your hand is deathly close to the end of that muzzle with that fireball. So if you're trained well, you won't have a problem. Or if you put a hand stop there, it's a really good idea just to make sure that you don't go forward. It's not, not so good. But this grip here, now I have small hands too. So the fact that I'm nervous about that <laughs> is an issue. The other thing is it's not really, other than an ambidextrous safety, it's not really a gun for lefties. Uh, the charging handles on this side is kind of hard to reach over. The charging handle is hard to pull back and function. Sometimes, other times it's fine. So there's a little inconsistency with that. Maybe it's just mine, I don't know, but I just found a little bit, it's a lot harder to work than the AR-15 platform. But this right here, <laughs> this grip, uh, I like to hold it right here. If you're too far up, you can get a little blood blister from this bolt release right here. If you're too far down, your thumb tends to hit this mag release and it's really easy to hit it as I've done multiple times in this video already and my mag is full of dust now. Oh, not again! <sighs> but that is uh, that's something I don't really love about it. I just put my hand totally over the mag release and I didn't have a problem while I was shooting, but that's something to be definitely very aware of. Now it's nice because it comes up with flip-up sights. If a gun doesn't come with sights, sometimes I just shoot it initially without sights because what the heck, it's fun just to see how it shoots regardless of sights, but it is sure nice when they come with sights because I don't have to rummage through my boxes trying to find sights for the gun. That's, that's cool that they do that. The sights are actually quite high compared to the barrel. They claim a very low bore axis. The barrel is closer to your hand than your eyes. I prefer my irons a lot closer to my bore ideally, but again, I didn't have problems shooting it, so I don't want to nitpick too much. Now this is an extended Glock mag. It does take Glock magazines, which is great because that makes it very versatile. Proprietary mags suck. One little pet peeve though, the safety I feel is not that easy to flip on. It's easy to flip off, but it's not that easy to flip on with just my thumb. And it could just be me, could just be how my hands are, but I'm not really able to flip it up while maintaining a grip. While I was shooting, I didn't really notice a problem because I do it automatically. So when I looked down to make sure that I had the safety on, I did have it on already. So I must have switched it, but I'm not really sure how I did. 
I'll have to look at the footage later. So obviously I didn't have a, a problem when I was shooting, but luckily, luckily that safety is ambidextrous. Eh. So all in all, the Vector is a very good gun and it is very easy to shoot and keep on target. Now the downside to this is you could paddle a boat with it. Um, <laughs> yes, it's innovation and I love, I love when companies think outside the box. Very cool. So I'm not going to knock it for that, but it is something to get used to and I'm not so sure how practical it is, um, but as far as how fun it is. If you ever get a chance to shoot a vector, I highly recommend it. So thank you so much for joining me. Aim true and happy shooting. <laughs>